everyone, welcome to the channel, it's Krista. And today is the first of a series of videos about mineral identification. So there's a couple of different traits for minerals that help, help you identify which mineral is which, those little characteristics that are unique between each of them. Look at all of our minerals here and tell me what stands out as differences between them. And there's, there's more than one answer, there's a lot of differences between them obviously. Now, some of the things that might stand out are things like color. That's probably one of the first things you noticed. Our malachite is green, the azurite is blue, the, uh, the olivine is green. It's, it's one of those things that stands out. But color's not the best at identifying minerals because some minerals can be almost any color of the rainbow. Take your fluorite here or your quartz. Um, there's really a lot of different varieties in color, so it's not really the best. You've got hardness, which if you rock tumble, that's probably one of the more popular, prominent um, mineral identification characters that, that you might be familiar with. And that's the Mohs scale of hardness, and we'll talk about that in one of the other videos. There's also a lot of other things as well. There's things like your crystal habit, your cleavage planes, the uh, specific gravity of the mineral, special properties, the streak, and the luster. So the property I want to talk about today is luster. That's one of my favorites, so I thought it would be a good one to start with for our first mineral ID video. And uh, I will talk about a couple of different types of luster that are common in different minerals. And uh, maybe that'll be one extra step in your mineral ID in the future. So the first breakdown with luster is metallic versus non-metallic. And there's also submetallic, which is kind of metallic, but for the sake of simplicity, metallic versus non-metallic. So things like our copper, our galena, our pyrite, those are all metallic. Those very much look like metal if this wants to focus. You can see that they just, they have a metal look to them. That's a metallic luster. Um, super simple there. You've got ones like this hematite that kind of looks metallic, but kind of not. So that would probably fall under submetallic. But uh, you could make arguments for the spatroidal part here versus the, the sides of it there as well. But uh, we're going to call these metallic. I'm going to call this one submetallic. I'm going to set them off to the side. So what is luster exactly? Um, we've broken down our metallic versus our non-metallic, and that seems pretty self-explanatory. But how do you describe luster? Basically, it's how well a mineral reflects light, and it's like the sheen on the surface of the mineral. So, metallic, obvious, but all of the rest of these, they all reflect light so differently. Um, and they all have a different, different sheen. So we'll talk about a little bit of each of those subcategories of the non-metallic luster. So, first up, we have our vitreous luster, or glassy luster. So that's going to shine like, like broken glass, pretty much. So that's going to, most obviously, be our quartz. That, that looks like it shines like glass. It's got a kind of broken glass look to it. Easy peasy with that one. There's a lot of other ones that fit that. Things like our topaz here, which is the, the mineral in here that's got that that glassy look to it and a couple others i would say that the calcite this one especially you could argue for for broken glass look to that a lot of the the clear see-through minerals i would say are our celestite is that glassy texture or luster sorry and uh, I think the aragonite would fit in there as well. What do you think? So, fluorite, I would put that in there too, I think. Um, especially these ones. So, a lot of these are just going to be under that vitreous, that glassy texture. But not all of them. We still have a lot of other ones here. Um, a couple... A couple other of uh, the vitreous ones would be the olivine here. I think that that qualifies as glassy looking. Those little little green guys there. 
And you could probably make the, the argument for the epidote as well, which is the green on this one, that it's kind of got that, that glassy look to it. Um, you might be able to argue for something else with that one. Leave a comment if you think it belongs in another uh, luster group. I'd probably put the uh, azurite in with those vitreous minerals as well. But uh, that one's harder to tell because this is not the best sample. And a lot of these can be many different lusters. Now, one of the other ones that I think is more obvious is a pearly luster here. So we've got our muscovite mica. And that's that's really pearly looking. Look at how how the light hits that on those cleavage planes. Um, it just looks really, really pearly. You can uh, say that about the other micas too. This is our lepidolite. And it's got that kind of pearly look to it. And our biotite, which is our other mica back here. These are small pieces that I found somewhere. So it's kind of, it's got that really high shine and those like really flaky plates. So that's typically what you get with the pearly luster. Um, you have other things that'll have the pearly luster as well. Talc, uh, still bite can have it. I don't have examples of those, unfortunately for you, but uh, it's not the only one. Now we've got a couple other types of luster as well. We have waxy, which basically means it shines like wax. Um, Chalcedony is often an example of that, and this is probably not the best example, ignore the, the Drew's pocket, but it's got a waxy feel to it, it's got a waxy look, it doesn't shine the way that the, uh, the natural quartz does as far as the light reflecting off of it, it, it does look a little bit more waxy. So uh, a lot of Chalcedony, so your Jaspers and Agates, they often have that waxy luster to them. Um, other ones that have waxy luster include things like your Jade. Um, Verisite is another mineral that has it. I would argue that this, uh, this Appetite kind of has a waxy luster, but, uh, Appetite is one of the ones that can have a couple different lusters, um, whether it be the, the vitreous glassy or the, uh, the waxy or something else. I would argue that this specific piece is waxy looking, but you can, uh, argue differently if you'd like. <laughs> Here are a couple of like superior agates that I'll show, so show that waxy luster. Just really, really kind of dull, but with a little bit of a shine. And I think this one has the waxiest of them. That might be a Jasper. I have to cut that one open and see. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. All right, next up we've got our silky luster. And I've got this giant piece of selenite here that Maybe argue for pearly luster, but I think think it falls under silky, especially when you uh, look at the sides. This is a well, gypsum technically, but selenite's uh, a type of gypsum. But uh, this one really really shows the silkiness that uh, that gypsum selenite has. It's not the only silky mineral though, or mineral with a silky luster. I uh, brought a special one from inside that uh, gets sealed in two plastic baggies because, well, it's an exciting one. This guy here. And the reason he hangs out in two plastic bags all the time is because this is asbestos in its crystal form. And these are soft, silky, that's their crystal crystals, um, which is insane. I probably shouldn't be doing that, but uh, so that's another one with silky luster and probably one of the coolest pieces I have in my collection. Our uh, next type of luster is our greasy luster. So probably the most notable for that is going to be the graphite, which is in your pencil tips. If you look at the, the tip of your pencil. It's kind of got a greasy metallic look um, that you can put under a submetallic luster, but also under a greasy luster. But another one that often falls under the greasy luster is a uh, opal, um, and it's kind of just—it looks like it's got a coat of oil on it. And to be fair, this one was in water or oil, but this one was not. Um, it's just a common opal that's in a thunder egg here, 
and it's kind of got that little little oily greasy texture all right next up is our resinous texture this does not want to focus the name should be pretty self-explanatory um, it's gonna look like tree resin which amber is probably the most uh, obvious of those and this is copal amber but uh yeah that, I mean that pretty much is just fossilized tree resin so uh that's going to be what your uh, resinous luster is going to look like so next up is our earthy or dull and you can separate those two out but I think it's easier to just combine them together because they kind of kind of overlap um, dull would just have minimal to no shine, and earthy looks like it, it came from the earth. Um, I would say things like sulfur are probably in that dull to earthy category. Chrysocolla is in there. It does not want to uh, show up there. And uh, this malachite, I would probably put in the earthy. You can maybe make an argument for waxy. Um, malachite can be a lot of different things. It can be silky. It's got, this one has some little crystals in here. And that specific area can be vitreous, where these little crystals are. But uh, that's kind of one that's all over the place. But I think overall, he's pretty, pretty dull and earthy. I would probably also put halite, halite? Salt in there as well, in that, that earthy category. Um, you can maybe argue for vitreous on that, but I I think it's pretty pretty earthy looking. But leave a comment if you think differently. <laughs> um, we got a couple left here, guys, and a couple of these are kind of weird because they're just low quality, specifically our, uh, our gemstones here. We've got a emerald, a ruby, a uh, garnet, and some tourmaline and none of these really fit where they're supposed to so rubies woo. so a lot of these you can argue for vitreous which i'd probably put this one in to a different one called adamantine which is kind of similar to that glassy look that the quartz has but it's more it shines like a diamond so it's got more more brilliance and it's hard to describe that, and it's hard to find minerals that just have that naturally. I don't have any raw diamonds. I could uh, show you my engagement ring, but I don't have it on at the moment. And that's a cut diamond, so I don't think I would count it if we're looking at raw materials. So, like, this emerald. It's such a low-quality emerald. It's not... It doesn't want to focus, for one. Buddy. There we go. Like, you could probably argue for a dull to waxy luster on this guy. Um, but maybe a finer, finer grade emerald might be more that vitreous slash glassy luster. Or even adamantine, that, that diamond luster. But uh, it just goes to show sometimes it depends on the grade of the mineral. So, luster on its own isn't necessarily going to define everything. Um, like, what about this kyanite? This kind of you could put in that submetallic texture. You could say silky with these these blades. Um, but if it was a blue kind of you probably couldn't put it in the submetallic. And uh, it would be a little bit different. So you, you need more than just one identification. So you need more than just hardness or more than just luster or more than just, you know, whatever that first defining character is to figure out what you need. Now this one, this isn't really luster, the labradorescence on this, because that's specific to the cleavage of the mineral. It's something that's happening under the surface. So you still have this like really cool color play, but what do you call the actual luster, the way the light is hitting this one? Um, I'd probably still put it in the vitreous, that, uh, that glassy texture. Um, but, hmm, I don't know on this one. What, what do you think? Let me know. I feel like there's going to be a lot of what do you thinks in this video. But, uh, but yeah, so the labradorescence is not a luster. That's a special property 
and that has more to do with cleavage, which we'll talk about in a different video. So, uh, so stay tuned for that one. Alright, but for these guys, I think that they're kind of in between a couple different ones. But I'm going to set these off the side because I'm almost out of memory on my camera. And uh, we're going to look at two that I have a challenge for you. What do you think on this wave of light? And uh, you can pause and think about it for a second and let me know. So I would say for the wave of light, you can argue that it has kind of a silky texture in these radials with these little, little fibers. You could argue for waxy. All these betroidals kind of look a little waxy there. And uh, you could probably argue for vitreous, that like, glassy texture, because um, it, it does have a little bit of that glassy shine on top of the petroidals. So you can have three different lusters here, in my opinion, and maybe more. All right, the other one I want you to think about is the cinnabar, which is the red on here. Now, cinnabar can also have a couple different lusters. I want your opinions on what you think this one is. So uh, leave comments below on that one and on the wave light, which is here. And let me know what you would put as a luster. I have a couple opinions on this one. I don't know what to think about on the Cinnabar. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think on those below. And, uh, and yeah, I hope that this was a uh, helpful bit of information on luster, which is just one property in those mineral identifications. Um, there'll be another video next week on a different topic. I haven't decided yet, um, but we're going to do all throughout March, um, different mineral ID videos. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't participated in the, uh, mineral madness for the month of March, if you are watching this in March of 2022, um, I'll have links for that below. You can vote on your favorite minerals for a chance to enter our, uh, our, uh, giveaway for the month and uh, learn about some cool minerals in the process. So I'll have a link to that video at the end of this video and uh, some links below for voting and, and all of that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope I didn't talk too much or, t you know, not talk enough, but uh, let me know your thoughts on some of these lusters down in the comments below. Anyway, thanks so much and have a great day.